What is going on, Solo fam? My name is John Solo, and welcome to the sixth episode of Messed Up Origins Crypt TV Edition. Can you believe that we only have one more episode to go after this? I'm gonna miss this series. For those who are new around here, Crypt TV is a YouTube channel that makes some amazing short horror films and series, and that's not an exaggeration. Everything they put out is top of the line, and they upload three times a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Over the past few weeks, we've analyzed their Fable series, which takes your favorite fairy tale from your childhood and makes them horrifying. The fable that we're watching today was inspired by elements from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, a novel from 1865. We still haven't covered the full story on Messed Up Origins, but I plan to in the future. Instead, we're going to look at one of the most famous characters from the story, the Cheshire Cat. If you like this series, don't forget to hit that like button to show your support and subscribe for new content like this every single week. So the Cheshire Cat was first introduced in Lewis Carroll's novel, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Land. The character was inspired by an old phrase, smiling like a Cheshire cat. The origins of that phrase are still debated to this day, but the most widely accepted theory is that it refers to a cat living in the English county of Cheshire, which is known for producing a lot of milk and dairy, which cats love, hence the smiling. Carol decided to personify the cat from that phrase. He gave it a physical form, a personality, and magic powers. In the book, the cat doesn't play quite as large a role as he does in the movie Alice in Wonderland, but the two have very similar characteristics. They talk in really confusing ways that are sometimes funny, but also kind of annoying. They raise philosophical questions to Alice, even though she clearly doesn't understand them. And while they sometimes appear to be making a situation worse for her, they're actually rooting for Alice to succeed and even are helping her indirectly. These characteristics can also be found in Crypt TV's Dr. Broach, with there being one key difference we'll talk about at the end so I don't spoil it. The one thing I will say is this guy's got the least trustworthy face I've ever seen. The episode opens with our main character, Autumn, sitting nervously in the doctor's waiting room. We don't know why she's there, but the receptionist calls Dr. Broach a miracle worker. He calls Autumn into his office and sets the tone for the creepiest doctor's appointment in history. He tells Autumn that he has two rules, that she must lie, but never lie. This is the first line of his that reflects the confusing way that Cheshire Cat talks. What he means is that Autumn must lie down, but not lie to him. She has to tell the truth. She lies down on the couch and says she She's never done anything like this before, and the doctor replies that firsts are just the beginning of something beautiful, like birth and death. Not even gonna try to unpack that one. Autumn closes her eyes, and they start going over why exactly she's there. It turns out that throughout her childhood, she was abused by her mother, and Broach says that if pain is what she felt, that's the door she must open. This guy seems to be something of a hypnotist. He's putting a lot of emphasis on Autumn visualizing that door. He's got a timer going in the background, and he pulls out a tuning fork and hits it against his desk. He's sort of guiding Autumn through this state of hypnosis. He tells her the door is there, she agrees, and then opens the door so we're transported back to her childhood. You'll notice she looks quite a bit like Alice here. She tries asking her mom when her father's gonna be back, but it's basically the worst timing possible because her mom is literally holding divorce papers intended for her father. This question hits her where it hurts. She throws the papers at Autumn and says that if she finds her dad, to give those to him. Then when Autumn tries to pick them up, her mom gets pissed and drags her by the hair to her room. This is causing an emotional reaction from Autumn in the doctor's office, and he keeps pushing it further. He hits the tuning fork against the desk again, and listen to what he says. The door you see may not be yours, for she your way will block. Look closer now and count the times my clock does tick and talk. I gotta say, if any doctor or any person whispered to me in that tone of voice, I would just run. Unfortunately, Autumn is just stuck in a hypnotized state and having another vision. This time, she's confronting her mom as an adult, and lo and behold, this woman is as nasty as ever. She's insulting Autumn, blaming her for her problems, and then crosses the line when she grabs her by the hair like in the flashback. Autumn sees what appears to be Dr. Broach in a clown mask and then fights back, delivering a beautiful left cross that knocks her mom on her ass. She walks over to the mirror, sees the clown again, and punches the glass to use a shard of it as a weapon. She grapples with her mother a little bit more and gets the upper hand when she bites her and stabs her in the chest. The clown then comes over to... 
offer his assistance. As soon as he does, however, the shard of glass turns into a tuning fork, and after getting stabbed another five or six times, Autumn's mother is dead. She stands up and appears to be in shock as she wanders through the house, and just when things start to get unstable, the clown pushes her down the stairs, and she's knocked unconscious. She suddenly wakes up to find herself in Dr. Broach's once again, and tells him she had the craziest dream. His response? The reality of our dreams is that our dreams can become our reality. Pretty motivational quote in the right context, but not this one. Autumn's hands are covered in blood, and she looks around the office in confusion as Dr. Broach gives her the scariest look a person can give you. He's acting way too friendly, saying the session is over and how proud of her he is, but when he opens the door, two orderlies are waiting for her. Clearly something isn't right, but she's not given the time to explain. They inject her with a sedative when she starts to bite back, and then carry her out while the good doctor waves goodbye like a freak. You might think the story's over, but you'd be wrong. There's one last shot of Broach sitting at his desk, taking notes on his patients. He pulls a bloodstained folder out from his desk, and we see his name on not only that, but a hospital wristband. So it turns out this guy is certifiably crazy, but who's surprised? Sadly, no one in his universe is going to figure it out anytime soon, because he shreds the documents as he sits there laughing like a maniac. <laughs> I think the moral of this story is don't let anyone hypnotize you because you never know who's escaped an insane asylum. I really think this is the best reimagining of the Cheshire Cat I've ever seen. There's so many subtle connections between the characters. Like I said earlier, there is one major difference between Dr. Broach and Cheshire Cat. In Alice in Wonderland stories, the cat doesn't always appear to be on her side, but he really is helping her and rooting her on. For example, when she plays croquet against the Queen of Hearts, the cat is the one that's actually irritating the queen, but he's misdirecting her anger towards Alice. Initially, it seems like he's trying to get her in trouble, but ultimately this is what causes her to run out of the Queen's court and wake up and save reality. Cheshire Broach does the opposite. He gives you the impression that he's helping you, but when you wake up, your life is so, so much worse. And did you pick up on the fact that Autumn's appointments happened on two different days? If you compare her outfits and his calendars, you'll see they're over a week apart. So I guess Autumn murdering her mom was real and she was just hypnotized the whole time. Can't say the lady didn't deserve it, though, she was a horrible parent. What did you guys think of the Cheshire episode? Did you love it? Was it scary? Let me know by hitting that like button and leaving your thoughts in the comments. If you want to watch more Crypt TV, I've got a link to their channel in the description, comments, and at the end of this video. I would highly recommend you click on one of them and check out their stuff. Consider even watching Cheshire again with the sound on and extended scenes. It's a different experience when I'm not talking over the whole thing. Also next week comes the finale of this little series, and we're going to be watching the Little Mermaid episode, so maybe Maybe give that one a shot so you're ready. Until next time, Solo fam, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first.